Tony, we have an experiment to do. What is it? I'm in. I don't even need to know. I'm in. Injected this dead bird with the reagent. Okay. Do you have your recorder? Yeah, here. I'll use my cell phone. It's 2020. All right, go. This better be a magic trick, Dan. <laughs> you want to see magic? You want someone who doesn't do magic to do magic? I, yeah, I, need this bird to come, I need this bird to come alive right now. No! Oh, the bird's <laughs> alive! God, it's killing me! It's killing me! Ah! So, welcome to Hate Watching with Dan and Tony. I'm Dan. And I'm Tony. It's October and we're doing Woo! monster and horror and Halloween type movies. And this week we're doing one of my picks, the movie Reanimator, which I remember when it came out. And I, at this point in my life, I was 20 because this came out in 1985. <laughs> Tony was a twinkle in his father's eye. Wait, I don't I mean, think, first of all, I don't think I was ever a twinkle in my father's <laughs> eye. Whatever the opposite of a twinkle is, I think that's what I was. Rage quit. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I, I remember this, and I was a big H.P. Lovecraft fan, and oh, I was just yeah. like, this is not the movie to go see, because this is not going to really uh, wet, my, wet, wet my appetite for for H.P. Lovecraft. Because this, although based... Based on H.P. Lovecraft, it's uh, very little, uh, very little Lovecraft is in there. There's there's not a lot of horror. I mean, there's horror ish, but there's, there's like not horror a lot of elements. Yes, but they're not done in, you know, the the genre way. Yeah, it's more like slasher horror and a lot of horror that came from. I mean, and that's we'll get into that. It it felt very much like a precursor kind of movie that really sort of you know, it was leading into where we're at now. Which is a, which is a, uh, either a blessing or a curse, depending how you look at it. So 1985, 86 minutes. Uh, what was the director guy's name? Uh, he just passed away. Um, uh, oh, no, I didn't know that. Stuart, Stuart Gordon, who did a lot of other horror stuff, did a lot of stage, did a lot of, a lot of interesting things. Super interesting guy. Um, yeah, Empire Pictures, and uh, yeah, uh, I, I I gotta say I enjoyed it. I mean, Dan, I I haven't seen this since I was in high school, and I don't know why I stopped watching it. This movie is great. I love this movie. I I laughed a lot. I had a great time, and it's just it's just the right amount of camp for me. Like it, it never went to the part where I was like, I roll <laughs> troll to I roll or anything like that. And it was just like it was right up on that line. And I was like, I'm with you guys. I'm riding this out to the end. And there's some there's some really great stuff in this movie. And then, you know, there's a couple of things that I take out. But it was the 80s. Yeah. And I, I think that's one of the things I th why I can say that I enjoyed this movie is they pl it had a real plot. That sort of went yeah. from A to B to C. I mean, there were a couple of weird things because you always have to do that because they had a budget of, you know, they had, a, they had a budget, but they had a, you know, they had limited amount of sets and a limited sure. amount of everything. You could tell, you could tell, you know, where, where are we going to go back? Well, we're going to go back to the office that we have access to, you know? Right. Yeah. <laughs> At one point the, you know, the doctor's office is literally attached to the, the padded roof. The right. Yeah. Which is, he I I'm confused. Does he have that in the back of his office? Just like waiting just in case? Because yes. that's that is wild. You are, I don't think you are allowed to have that there, sir. It's, it was kind of like, you know, what didn't Yui Bowl has sort of the same thing? The doctor, you know, he goes to his lab and in the, the monster is lab chained. somewhere. Yeah. And the, there's like a chained up, you know, one of the monsters is chained up in a room right there on his lab. Yeah, They're kind of like, and nobody ever comes investigate in. Investigate these people because these people have hidden dungeons in their offices. That's not okay. I'm not okay with it. I think that's the whole point. Is they're not hidden dungeons. 
Yes, if you were to walk out in the, the open <laughs> in the you in the alone in the dark, if you were to walk into basically what was his office, I assume. Yeah. Literally, there's a room with bar, you know, bars on the window, and it's like, what do you keep in there? Like, the rah, monsters. Rah, rah. Yeah, <laughs> and the same thing here. You know, the there's the piece of plexi where you have like literally the insane uh, ex dean. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, no one else wants to deal with the dean. Just you know, <laughs> just, uh, give just him, put him in there. I don't know. So they so the, the movie starts off with a bang, Zurich. Uh, you know, there's all this commotion. The guy, the guards bust into the room. The doctor is dying. There's a uh, Her- Herbert West, like trying to reanimate him, and I, there's bl- I think there's blood everywhere. There's there's oh, blood his- splattered everywhere. This place is covered, and everyone is way too calm for what they just walked into. Those guards with their guns drawn walk in are just kind of like observing all this massacre, and just like okay, okay, well you know what, you should come with us. Gruber uh, Gruber gets up and his eyes are all bloated and they go so and then they cool. shoot blood everywhere. Great, great. I and it, when this happened, I was like, <laughs> "Hell yes, we are in for a treat. This is gonna be fun." Tony is on board. Um, I think I read something about the special effects guy who did all the special effects. Said he uses usually uses two cartons of blood or you know whatever amount of blood. And he said, with this movie, 14. <laughs> so <laughs> which I totally you know, believe. There's there's not a not a horror scene where West doesn't just end up with his white sleeves coated <laughs> in blood. Covered. Just this probably happens like four times, four or five times during the movie. And you're like, okay. Yeah, they go for it. They're going big. And of course, they yell at him, you killed him. And of course, Herbert West yells back, no, I gave him life. The first of many one-liners. Which is a great one-liner, but I do have a question. How did he die? Do we ever learn that? <laughs> no, we have no idea. <laughs> because I have a sneaking suspicion he did kill him and then I, reanimated him and then killed him again because he gave him too much. So I think he killed him <laughs> twice. I think this guy's lying. Her- Herbert, yeah, we don't we usually don't see when things actually die. And when we do see things actually die, it is usually Herbert uh, putting them, you know, in the grave. Yeah, I have a sneaking suspicion that he's full of it. Then we cut right to the titles. Titles? Incredible. Just. They, they kind of remind me of the new, like, HBO titles where it's like images mm. and music and it's like it's done. It's done really well. It's just, uh, you know, old uh, medical images, like single, da- you know, black and white medical images, which they then color with a single color and they do spins and just just really well choreographed. And the music throughout the movie is incredible. Yeah, it is on point. I sh- I was planning on looking that up and then I forgot. Did- I don't suppose you looked up who it was. I looked up the guy. I didn't see what else he did, but I'm sure he worked okay. forever and continues. To I work. hope so. I hope and- so. It was great. And somebody was like, oh, it's a lot like Psycho. And the dude was like, yeah, I, he based it sort of on the Psycho music. And when you really listen to it, it's very it's it's sure. similar themes. But it's like, that's what you want to do in a low budget movie. You want to evoke things that you want to be like so that that's this right. movie where they haven't they don't have a lot of money and they have to sort of cut every corner they can. You want to step up something like the music and make it. You don't want it to be just like, you know, you can't do. You know, I mean, uh, I'm okay with that, too. That was a catchy little tune, Dan. Cast, but yeah, you know. no, I agree. And, I mean, you, you borrow you borrow and you homage to the greats, you know? Yes. It's not you're not you're not stealing. You're saying this. This is this is, you know, something magnificent. And I'm going to put my own spin on. It. And when you have the time and money to to do everything you want to do and you can, you know, literally spend a lot of time scoring each scene, then you do that. But on these kind of movies, you you, you have a do. limited budget. You have limited. Tony knows, having been on a number of these movies, <laughs> there's never any time or money yeah. or talent. Yeah. I'm sorry, or that was really mean. I work on the script or direction or acting. So, so you got to take what you can get. You take what you can get. You do your best. So, boom, we're right in it. We're at Miskatonic Medical. Uh, we meet uh, my boy Dan. What's Dan's last name? Oh, Goodsell. It's Dan. No, Good- it's Kane. Not. It's Dan Kane. 
Dan Kane. Yeah. So Dan Kane, Herbert West are two main guys. Dan Kane's your up and coming resident. He's trying to save this lady and he's doing everything he can. He does not want to give up. Is I mean, I understand that that's what they're telling us he's doing and he's all sweaty from the work. I have some questions about the <laughs> the medical uh, abilities of these people because his chest compressions do not look oh. good. Okay, let, hold on. Let me explain why this is coming up, though, real quick. Because we just finished our rewatch of Lost. I, th- I think I've told you that. I don't know if I've brought this uh, up on the show. But Jack <laughs> what, what? in the show, Matthew Fox, <sighs> is the greatest fake CPR person in the world. It looks so real. And like he's doing it. And this guy's just kind of shaking her. He's just shaking her a little bit. I don't buy it. <laughs> The one thing you got to remember with with chest compressions and all that, a lot of times what you do is you break break the people's ribs. Yeah, Yeah. you break them for sure. So when you tell the extra that she's going to be lying naked on the thing and he's going to come up there and probably he might break a few ribs because we got to make it as real as Lost because Tony, (laughs) Tony loves Lost. He's watched the whole Lost thing like 12 times because it's true. Whatever. How many times have you watched all of Lost? All of it, like straight through probably four. I've probably only done that for, but I've watched seasons a lot. Season one is one of the best, best seasons of television you'll ever see. It ain't, that's not here or there. I also have a question about sure. the paddles. Yeah. I've never seen this done in real life. So I, I honestly don't know what happens, but this lady, her move is just to throw out her arms when she is shocked. Did you see? Me? Well, yeah, I mean, what <laughs> what it's going to do is it sends that pulse through you, so it it sort of energizes every one of your muscles. So you're not going to sure. seize up. You're going to... Well, yeah, but usually when you see it, it's more of a, you know, like the chest goes cha, up cha, in cha. the movies. But yeah. all she did was throw out her arms. <laughs> it was the oh only God. thing that moved on her. And it looked like she was just kind of like flying there. I don't know. I got a real kick out of it. Ah, oh, Tony, Tony, Tony. <laughs> So the fun thing, fun thing, I, I initially had a problem with it, but then I realized maybe this is true. After you lose a person, then the resident guy has to like put, send, roll him down to the morgue. There's not like a, there's not like a dude right. that does it for that's, him. I don't think that's right, Dan. I <laughs> imagine that's somebody's job to like collect the bodies and bring them to the morgue. You shouldn't have to lose a patient and then do a walk of shame down to the morgue and tuck them in. That's too much. That was my initial thought. Then I I went directly to the, I think this is a good thing. Like, God damn it. You lose one. It's your responsibility. Damn. You should probably have, you probably got to clean it up too. Cause like when you die, there's all sort of mess. Yeah. It's all sort of mess. It's grody. That, Dan, so, I can't believe that you think this doctor who's doing everything he he's can. Not a you doctor. just said it. Okay, he's not this a doctor. resident. So he's okay, a resident. okay. So you think if he was a doctor, then it's no longer his responsibility because oh, he's absolutely. paid his dues. Absolutely, he's okay, a resident. So this he's, is like a hazing thing. Well, he's a student, and he's got to do the shit jobs, right? <laughs> student, student doesn't get to like go to teacher's lounge and you know smoke cigarillos and crap. <laughs> Doing the bodies, uh, doing right. body duty. Yeah, I'm on body, board. Body duty. Um, so he rolls it down there, and we we have the security guard of the morgue who has to unlock the doors. Gives us the line: "Nobody wants in, and ain't nobody getting out." Um, <laughs> such, a, such a good foreshadow. I and, love it. And also, he has a tendency to just just bail. You know, he's there all the time, and then when he wants to, he just <laughs> got to get a sandwich. You know, he's, going out for a smoke. Is, I we're led to believe that he's there all the time, except for when he needs to be. <laughs> exactly. He he is on a free to bail at any moment, as opposed to like, you know, calling upstairs and saying, can you cover the morgue shift while I go get a sandwich? No, he's just like, nope. I'm out of here. She's like, you know what? I've been here for about four hours. You got a dead body. Go for it. I'm going to take 20. I'll see you tomorrow. And then this was the point I really fell in love with the movie. He rolls it into like there's the there's the morgue and then there's like the cold section where they keep them, keep all the bodies. And we do this nice arm gag where the arm keeps falling out and he keeps putting it back up. And I'm like, 
there we go. Here is a movie that's committed to a nice, just a nice little gag. They don't overplay it. They nope. just do this little arm gag, which which fills up another, you know, 90 seconds of the movie or something and and just makes you feel good about yourself. Yeah, I know. I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it because I I was imagining like, what what do you do if that? So you got to get by. You got to buy. I don't want to touch a dead arm, but, you know, you got to. And then he doesn't do it good enough. And then it comes back out. You're like, oh, no, it's great. Ten out of ten. And he is a little too squeamish for being a doctor, like for stuff like that. He's like very ginger about that kind of stuff. Maybe that's why he's got that job. Maybe they're making him do it so he can acclimate to these dead bodies. So then we meet. um, Oh, shoot. Yeah, we meet. uh, Then we we're back and we're in class. And so we meet Dr. Hill, who's the big doctor. And basically this this whole movie is five characters. It's Herbert West, Dan Kane, Dr. Hill the dean and the dean's daughter who's going out with Dan. Yeah. So he's up there and he's showing them. There's like about 10 students. He's showing them. Dan's one of the students. He's showing them his, his brain laser and he burns a hole in a corpse and then he takes a Q-tip and sticks a Q-tip in there. It was super gross. It was, it was super gross. And I was eating dinner, Dan. <laughs> I was eating hot dogs and I was like, Oh no, I don't like this at all. Tony's up there <laughs> eating hot dogs. Um, wait, now is this the really good one? No, this isn't. No, that's later. Okay, so then we we get to meet Herbert West, and oh, maybe this isn't the class part. This is we just meet Herbert West. Her, Herbert comes in. He's doing the brain stuff, and Herbert's immediately confrontational with Doctor Hill, saying that Doctor Hill has been oh. ripping off Doctor Gruber. Right. So I give him a bunch of all, grief. Dr. Gruber's name is Hans Gruber. Yeah. Oh my from God. Die Hard. <laughs> I hadn't thought about that. It is. <laughs> it threw me for a good five minutes. I was like, wait, but if, why do they have the same name? Was it, was it based on like, did they just, whoever wrote Die Hard just loved this movie was like Hans Gruber. Great name. Or, is Hans Gruber in that movie the reanimated corpse of the guy in this movie? It could be a sequel, Dan. Ooh, connections within <laughs> connections, you know? Um, and so yeah, they get into a, a big fight about brain death. And and they get and, at, but that is after they say their names like five times each. I don't understand this scene because he's like, uh, what was your name again? West. <laughs> What Herbert was your West. name again? Herbert West. Dr. Hill, was it? <laughs> like, like these macho, these macho dudes forget each other's names. I loved it. It just it cracked me up. So now we cut to uh Dan getting it on with Meg. Um, and they're they're getting it on. And and I, I I'm always surprised at like they always have in these movies, there's this sort of casual nudity, which uh is like a selling point. Yeah. And I mean, this. I think the only nudity, like in maybe two, I mean, the corpses are nude at times, but, you know, normal human nudity. I think she just gets nude twice this this time and then at the, the big uh, payoff at the end. Yeah, which. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that scene. <laughs> I see for the ages. Yeah. Woof. And we, we established that he has a cat and we established that she Meg is the dean's daughter. And. They're going to get married, but they kind of keep their relationship on the down low. So this so that that one thread through the thing kind of confused me that why does so does the dean really not know that they're together because he knows that they're dating, but he doesn't know that they're getting it on and kind of cohabitating. Okay, so he just doesn't know how serious. Because at one point he's like, what have you been doing with my daughter, Dan? And I was like, well, they've been doing it. They've but you been, see, he's they've been see, going he, at it, sir. You gotta cast your mind back to 1985. Things Wasn't were alive. different. <laughs> Dif- they were they were different than they are now. And you know, okay, parents could would imagine that their children were not off fornicating oh, freely man. on on film for whoever asked for it. Um, so, and that's what I kind of like. They sort of set up this sort of dynamic, and it's it's an. 
I felt it was acceptable looking at it through 2020 eyes where we have Tinder and Grinder and God right. only knows what, Tough where one. everyone just does, you know, there's sites to do, you know, anything. Yeah. You know, it sounds like is, a simpler time. It it was. I mean, it, it wasn't, but uh, some people like to like to act like it was. I think it was. Time. Yeah, it was easier to per, to pretend that it was at the time. Yes. You know, like it yes. was easier to fool yourself because it wasn't everywhere. You can imagine that your daughter was this princess who was pure and was going to be virginal when she actually gets married, and the two of them would just make out occasionally. Yes, but guess what, pal? You're wrong. They're so doing it. They're, they're doing it and they're yes so she's getting ready to like go out the door opens the door herbert west is there he is so good in this movie he's so weird and creepy i i'm obsessed with him and so herbert's looking for an apartment dan had put up a notice that he had available space uh you know meg is immediately like you know time out this is not happening Right, because she she can sense it. Women have that sense. That's just like, no, this guy's this guy's gross. Get him out of here. <laughs> Get him out now. Well, I think she didn't want to spoil her situation that she had going on there, where she could just freely, you know, flit about. Flit about. <laughs> yes. So he's like, "Is there a basement?" They go down and see the basement, and you know, Herbert just pulls out cash. Like, he just boom, like, I'm moving cash. in now. My stuff's in the car. I'm ready to go. At that point, if I'm Dan, I'm like, nah, dude, we're done here. That's too much. Too forward. Uh, once, once again, Dan is a medical resident. He doesn't have money. He sees that cash money in front of his eyes. It's like, oh, <laughs> dollar just, bills, dollar bills. <laughs> ching, ching, ching. <laughs> he, he grabs the brass ring and he's like, Herbert, you're in. And uh, yeah. I. A lot goes on in this movie. <laughs> a lot does happen in this movie, but it's not a lot of movies where things like this much stuff happens so quickly. It feels super expositionally. That's not the right word, but you know what I mean? Like, it's like it feels like exposition, exposition, exposition. But this movie does it so seamlessly that I, I don't even care. I'm on board. I'm following the story. I'm ready to go. Well, because everything is actually motivated. They're not. There's not just like random things that happen, you know, it's like, you know, why, why does why does Mac, you know, follow them in the plastic car? You know, it's just like it's why do you have to bring Mac with, you know, it's like they just do. Everybody just does stuff to to get to the next situation. And this one, you're like, well, this is this is why he lives there, because he needs money and he needs a roommate, blah, blah, blah. So next we get to this is the class. So the Hill's teaching the class and he. He peels up a scalp and then he pulls out a bone saw. I okay, so we oh <laughs> I he just he just tears it right off the head. Yeah, he does. Is that's, that how that works? Yes, that is it's if you've ever watched people skin like rabbits and stuff. I for sure haven't, Dan. I don't know why I would. Okay. <laughs> what Tony, do you watch anything? Not real stuff. I watch <laughs> fiction. When you're when you skin an animal, you just like you you sort of incise it and then you peel it back and then you just like literally you can pull, you know that's why how taxidermy works. It's like it's not like they cut off little chunks of the animal and then taxidermy it. They just like go a whole skin. Oh Christ! Really? <laughs> that whole thing works. freaks me out. And you're left with this little sack of flesh that's like. <laughs> Where is my skin and my fur? Oh my god. <laughs> well, that's disturbing. So we we get into a whole thing. We're doing brain death again, and the doctor is saying like six to twelve minutes. And then we get the best part of the movie. What's the best part of the movie, Tony? I d I don't know. I mean, this is where oh, I don't even understand this part. Dan, why is he breaking the pencils? He breaks so many pencils. <laughs> like I don't understand what he's doing. <laughs> it's just it's a certain smell you get when they break a pencil. Uh, for those of you that are big pencil fighters, is that like sawdust? What what kind of smell is it? Well, you kind of it kind of energizes the wood, you know. So you could probably get a little bit of cellulose that sort of flies out. Um, 
Okay. You know, you get the broken, the broken graphite. Mm. I'm not sure that that's healthy. <laughs> I don't know, Dan. <laughs> so he just keeps the doctor will say something, and then Herbert breaks a pencil to like break his concentration. And so it's you, just, so it's just all mind ever. games. Is that what it is? He's playing mind games with Doctor Hill. It's just beautiful. I just I loved it so much. It's just it's so it's just so intense. Just... And what and and what's uh what's uh Doctor Hill's comeback? I don't know. What does he say? I suggest you get a pen. Oh yeah, no, that was good though. That was a zing. I was like, oh doc, you got him. Uh, he got but, him back. You know, if you think about it, you can also break a pen. It's just messier. Like that then you got true. ink going everywhere, and then it you know it's probably even more intimidating. So then we have like a dinner where it's uh, Dr. Hill, the Dean and the daughter. And then I think Dan shows up and is like, oh, we got some studying to do. Yeah, he's taking her away to study. And this is sort of the first clue we get that Dr. Hill's sort of interested in Meg. You call this a clue? This is like (laughs) he basically hits you over the head with it. He is. He is right on creepy in this scene. He's full <laughs> Hulk Hogan in this scene. All right. Might as well put his thumb in his mouth. You know, like, oh, hello, my friend's daughter. <laughs> <laughs> oh. So then we, we get back to the back to the house. They're doing smooching studies, and they're just like <laughs> How is how is Dan as a kisser, Tony, by the way? I actually, I'm all on board. I think it's pretty good. I mean, the the love scene. I was, I'm in. I fully bought it. I was like, good for you, dude. You're doing it. The kissing. This guy's clearly had a lot of practice. I'm, I'm on board with with Doctor Dan here. So Tony, we we've, we've established that in kissing scenes, you imagine yourself as the person being kissed. Yeah. What about in you know passionate love scenes? The love scenes are a little different, Dan, because. You you have to, you know, it's it's more of a give and take to me. So you have to imagine both sides of the argument here. Because it's hard to know whether or not you're you're doing it right, because they never really show a lot. Right. So let's take this love scene, for example. It's very <clears throat> powerful, right? Like they're very short and and intense thrusts. That can really go one of two ways for me in the bedroom. You know, like that could be seen because it's not very rhythmic. It's just kind of jerky. But she seems to be really digging it. So, you know, it it works out. You got to know what your partner likes and you got to execute. But kissing, kissing's more of like a, you know, it's universal, I think. You got to have those soft lips. And I think he does. I think he does. I'm I'm on board. So the girl notices that the cat is missing. Do you remember the name of the cat, Tony? No, but this is my this is my favorite part of the movie. What's the name of the cat? Rufus. Oh, I, Rufus. Which I think is a terrible name for a cat. So they begin <laughs> they begin hunting for the cat. Boom, boom, boom. She goes into West's room, opens the Hold fridge, on. finds the cat. What? Time out. You're skipping my favorite part of the oh, movie. Wait. I thought we're which is which is her calling to the cat. She <laughs> this is her call to the cat. <laughs> what, what the fuck is that? Not, first of all, cats don't even make that sound. So I don't know what it's not like if you call a cat, you know, you're usually like you know, you're calling. You know, I, I don't know. I've never heard of a like this. She's a cat whisperer. She's like, pss, 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 pss. <laughs> so dumb. And they let her do it like four times. Oh, yeah. No, she spends an inordinate amount of time like walking like six feet down a hallway and going in West door. Yeah. And, and it's actually repeated later on when he was was he looking for her at one point? He's in the house. And we we do the exact same yeah. him going down the hallway at the exact same speed. Exact I wish he would have called lighting. her the same way. <laughs> hey, Meg. 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 So we find the cat in the fridge, dead. And then they're like doing that. And, and boom, Herbert West is in the doorway. Of course, like, he knows you're in his room. Come on, guys. 
He knows you're in his room and he gives a really good story where he's all like, Dan, did you want me to call you at work and say your cat suffocated itself by digging through the trash and, and all this stuff. And it's, and the truth is I wouldn't, I would not want to hear that while I was at work. You know, that would be heartbreaking. You would not. So he, this is when we sort of begin Herbert West also sort of blackmailing Dan about telling Dean about the two of them being essentially cohabitating, cohabitating. So, Oh, okay. Then, oh, that, okay. Then, then what happens is I think we cut to a little further and then there's, are they both sitting there? Or is it just him? Oh, it's just him sitting there and he hears the cat scream. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. She's gone at this point. Yeah, I don't know she where is she left. is because she does show up at the end of this scene to see the cat. So that's actually very confusing. I don't know where she is. Maybe she like went to get a uh, coffee no, and then she, she comes back. She yeah, she comes back after the second reincarnation of the cat. But it's the same scene, right? It's kind of, yeah, I mean it's extended scene. Can, well, okay. But we yeah, kinda, so we he's have alone a and he hears a cat and he's like, "Hey, what's that?" And I was so like, he, "I don't know, it's a cat noise, you idiot." So we start with the cat hunt again. That's where we we have the exact yes, same hallway. Yes, he's yes. walking down the hallway and I just I, I didn't realize that the basement was at the end of the hall. I kind of thought it was in another direction to get the, to the basement. The the format of the room was confusing. So he goes down there and he goes down the stairs and we have Herbert West being attacked by the re, the reanimated cat. And, you know, it's your classic. I'm holding. Yep, just holding, holding this little stuffed thing. animal. Ah, it's killing me. It's <laughs> killing me. <laughs> And then we have like five minutes of them beating on the radiators and beating on cabinets. And there's, there it is. Bang, 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 bang. There it is. <laughs> boom, 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 boom. You almost got it under the stairs. Bang, 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 bang. And you're just like, it's this so is, much. <laughs> this is filmmaking. You do not have the budget to have a robot cat running around in there. You don't even have a puppet of the cat for the most part that can move no. around. So in other words, you just imply that they're seeing the cat and trying to wail on it by having darkness and yep. sh- shifting and quick lamps. Cuts. Yep, quick cuts, get in there, smack it up, people will buy it. <laughs> and then finally, he like just grabs it and just <laughs> he hoes it against the wall. And it splatters. <laughs> oh my God, I was sickened. I mean, this poor, this poor cat just explodes. It's awful. And when when we when we did, uh, Tony and I used to do improv. And the one thing you learned in improv was you don't ever say bad things about animals. You don't ever talk about harm to animals because you turn off an audience instantaneously. So quick, so quick. But if you do it this insanely comically, (laughs) nobody thinks that that's a real cat. Nobody even thinks that's, you know, that they use part of a real cat. We know that they've made a plastic bag of blood and some fur that they got at the craft store and made this cat. And what, what really sells it is when they put it on the tray and it comes back to life because it's like a sock puppet. It's like a shitty sock puppet that comes to life. And I was like, yes, that's how you do it because I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. I love it. So this is the point where we finally get the explanation of what's going on. Herbert West, has his fluid, his reagent that can recharge the dead. And he has yeah. brought the cat back to life. He has conquered brain death. Um, and for some reason, he needs Dan. And basically, we find what he needs Dan to do is he needs to hand Dan a tape recorder, which Dan <laughs> then hits record. And then Dan holds it. And then Herbert West says 15 cc's. And sometimes Dan repeats that sometimes, sometimes he, he does not <laughs> <laughs> and that is really literally all dan is supposed to do except fight the monsters when they turn into monsters then right, then it's good right. to have I dan mean, around you want to have backup but you're not going to tell him i need you for backup because sometimes these things try to kill you then he's not going to sign up dan but <laughs> also i mean he it takes two hands to inject things you got to hold it and then you got to inject it and so you, you can't, can't hold, hold the tape, tape recorder, recorder. And you certainly can't just set it on the table because <laughs> because the cat's going to come to life and go crazy. It's going to knock it over. What if you break it? Very dangerous. So that, yes, the cat is in a pan. He he brings the cat back and it's like, just like, man. 
kill me, man. I don't want to be alive. Hold on. I, I just, I love when he's like, his argument was like, the cat wasn't really dead yet. You, you lowered his vitals. And I was like, oh, that cat no, was in did. the fridge. That, dead was, that cat was super dead. We saw him. And then he's like, do you agree that he's dead now? And he picks him up. And oh, drops he, up. <laughs> he picks up the cat and drops it and it's just like stiff as a board <laughs> i love it and um of course he he gives the great line don't expect it to tango <laughs> after this poor cat's like back is broken he's yeah, just like beyond destroyed splattered. oh god unbelievable and then and then this is when Meg Meg comes in and sees what's going on. Right, right. And she's like, what is <laughs> happening? Which you would be. And then, of course, uh, this is when uh, this is when the he sort of says, I'm going to tell the dean and he sort of shuts him down by by sort of blackmailing him. Which is which is probably good. You know, because you should probably tell someone that this is happening because it's not super safe. Well, actually, you shouldn't tell someone this is happening because he does that <laughs> later and it does not go well. Um, So now we get to the point where we have to sort of uh, it's the big suspension of disbelief. Because <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> beca well, because now Dan is in 100 percent. For some unknown reason, he's not well, just hold, like. No, hold on. This is yeah. he goes to the dean, and the dean tells him that he's oh, going to get kicked out of school. Oh yeah, that, you're right. I'm sorry. This is I've left out that whole scene. He yeah. goes. He goes to the dean, tells the dean everything, and the dean is like, "You're out of school. West is out of school. Yeah, you're my, all screwed." My favorite part is he's like, "Tell your roommate that he's no longer a member of this university." I was like, "You're you're gonna you're gonna." You're going to rely on this guy to tell his roommate he's no longer in school. That's not how that works, guy. Get off your ass and make the call. Just call him up and say, hey, West, you're out. Terrible, Dean. This guy's garbage. You don't remember. It used to cost 10 cents to make a phone call. In 85? I That's a real question. I don't know the answer. To. Actually, it probably cost a quarter by then. So he's Jeez. saving a quarter. You, Same, you, hey, you know what? I take back everything I said. You got it. You got to pinch pennies when you can. Good for you, Dean. So, so Dan, to deal with this, Dan's like, okay, here's what I need to do. I need to sneak West into the morgue so he can continue his experiments. That's right, because, I mean, we're already in trouble. We might as well double down at this point and prove everyone wrong. It's like a pride thing. Oh, no, you know what it is? is. It's like, um, it's, it's uh, whatchamacallit, it's um, Animal House. You know, when they're going to take away your, uh, take away your uh, Animal House, what do you You're do? Like, you no, have a toga I don't party. Think so. And then you have you make a float and you put that in the parade and you just <laughs> you become agents of chaos. There and you that's go. and Dan is like, you know Dan's ready to go. He's doing it. So he sneaks <laughs> West into the morgue. And then we have like another one of my favorite things. You know, Morg had to take off his shoes his so shoes. that it looked like a dead thing. So we get like two minutes of him putting on his putting socks. Putting his shoes on. Like, why? <laughs> just do a cut. I don't need to watch it. But it, I mean, I did enjoy it, though. It did make me laugh. I was just like, he's really going to put on both socks, put on the shoes, tie the laces. And then now we're off to the races here. Unbelievable. It's so good. So we, we inject one of the things with uh, 15 cc's and then we up it to 20 cc's. And then we get the roid rage. <laughs> yeah. And the thing about the choreography, I'll say, of these, I, do we call them zombies? I don't even know what we call these creatures. I think we should just, let's just refer to them as zombies, even though they're not kind of classical zombies. Yeah. But they, they are the undead. They were the they dead the and undead. now they're alive. Yes. So they are the undead. So we're just going to call them zombies. Their go-to move is to pin you up against the wall and then just kind of wiggle with you. You know, like this oh, is what they do. They do a lot of chokeouts too, though. They that's true. That's true. Going for they the true. They're a little. They go a little S and M on you, but it's mostly just kind of grinding, just kind of shaking back and forth. And I was just like, this is a weird. It's a weird attack. Is all is my only thing. And maybe it's because they don't have brains. I don't know how the science works. Might might be a sexy thing. You know, sometimes it might choke be, you. Right. You know, it's like they got a lot of repressed sexuality and anger. You know. <laughs> 
So it's it's basically so only their id comes back. Is that what you're telling me? Yeah, it's an id thing. These <laughs> yeah, are the, right. id, the monsters of the id. It's like we're watching Forbidden Planet. Um. So it, the, the fight is going on, and then Halsey has come down there. Dean Halsey has come down there, and somebody somebody's fingers got bit off. Whose fingers got His, bit? The, Halsey's yeah, fingers the, got bit off. Yeah, but how did they? Why were they in the mouth of the monster? Because the monster is again holding him up on the wall, doing his little dance, and then yeah, the, the Dean I'm is like, "Let you me my put st- you." <laughs> Let me put my hand right in your mouth. Oh, I can't believe you bit off my fingers. What a surprise. <laughs> Idiot. So the Dean, you know, they, they got banged up, but the Dean, he gets he gets he tenderized. Gets, yeah, he <laughs> gets messed up. Unbelievable. And so to finally take down the the big, uh, the roid monster, we it's bone, bone saw through the chest. Bone saw is ready. Remember that? He just, no. it's, Oh, it's from Spider-Man. It doesn't matter. It's, oh. <laughs> but that's it goes right through him. It's great. It's great. Which, I don't think Bonesaw is going to do that, but we accept. Don't take this away from me, Dan. I <sighs> loved it. I think it's going to happen. And so that so they then they realize and they're like, is you know they go to check on the dean. And he's Dan's like, is he dead? And of course, Herbert's like, of course, of course. Yeah, <laughs> not even a hesitation. He's like, of course, he's dead. Did you not see what just happened? And so, oh, I guess Meg is in the hospital and and Halsey has told her not yeah. to come down because yeah, he knows he's he knows that Dan is her. down there. Yeah. And he's so like, you stay here. <laughs> so Meg is like sitting there and dad's, you know, Halsey's gone down and she's sitting next to this poor guy whose face is all bandaged up. Why is he out in the hallway? Like, oh, when, you've never I been to any a hospital or an ER. Oh yeah, they're I, everywhere. Knock on wood. No, I haven't. You know, thank you. Let's let's keep it that way. Is oh that, yeah, well, is that what ha- they just wander the halls? They they park you all sorts of. I mean, yeah, they park you, and then you have to deal with. You're, you're parked in this hallway, and then right there is like another person who's like losing their mind. Oh my oh, yeah. god! And I then don't you, ever want to go. Oh yeah, ERs are not good. I mean, not that this uh, was the ER, but hospitals. Sure. There's all sorts of people, you know. And it's like if you're that guy and and you're you know you're in, admitted, what are you gonna do? Sit around all day? No, you like wander around. I I guess I just in my head it was a little more uh, militarized, no. where you're just locked <laughs> in your room so you don't scare anybody else. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the. Okay, we're releasing cell block C for five minutes. Okay, back in your cells. <laughs> Jesus, Tony. Sorry, I don't know. So, so he's he's got Dan back on the recorder, and now he's gonna he's gonna shoot up he, Dean Halsey. He doesn't miss a beat, and that's what I love about his character. He's so driven that this guy just got murdered by the thing that didn't. They're like, you know what? We need to do the test on him because he is so fresh. <laughs> Grab his ankles that. immediately. It's so good. I have so much Just respect for him as a character. Get him up. Get him up so we can get him rocking. Yeah, we got to go now. So he shoots him up and, you know, and of course he's back. And it's, it's you know, and, and Herbert's like, welcome back to life. And Dan's losing it. As, and, uh, as you would at this point, for sure. Now, did did Dean Halsey, did he wail on anybody or how did they sort of subdue him? Oh, they, I think he a couple was, orderlies show up. Pretty quick. Yeah. Well, the, the security guard comes in, right? He or, comes in. Yeah, he comes in yeah, with gun drawn. And the, the Dean is like crying in the corner almost like he's having some sort of existential crisis almost as a as a zombie guy. So the dean didn't roid out quite as much. So if you're dead a long time, yeah. you're gonna you go full roid. But if you're not that dead, you do remain. You do keep some stuff, right? Because they because the whole thing was uh, West said he listened to him because like he got up and was gonna attack, and he's like, "Stop!" And the doctor kind of does. Yeah, he like kind of reacts to them, <sighs> so... which is a great sign for science. <laughs> <laughs> So Dan, Dan's, Dan's melting down. He's not doing well. Yeah. I don't know how, I guess he must just sort of run off. I don't know where, where does Dan, I mean, somehow Dan reconnects with Meg at some point. Well, Meg comes down with the security guard and sees her dad cowering yes. in the corner. 
Yes. And so they everyone kind of figures out what's happening. And then and then we lock up the doctor and just kind of disband. Yeah. So we so the doctor is locked up in Hill's or the dean is locked up in Hill's office. Yeah. He's all straight jacketed up. Um, and uh, Hill wants to cut him up. And the daughter's basically like, yeah, do do whatever you need to do. <laughs> Right. She's, he's like, I need to perform emergency surgery on him. And I mean, I kind of get it. Something's going on. I'd like to know. But, you know, he's not a great guy, so he's probably going to kill him. And this is once again, this is when he's in the uh, the, the plexi box. It's like right off of his yeah. office. And he's like, so he good. bangs into the thing occasionally. Well, because it's a it's a it's a what is that called? A one way mirror, two way mirror. What's that called? One when they mirror. can see him, but they, he can't see her. And so, like, they're talking, and then he'd, like, pop up. It's a good jump scare. I like it. So, and also, Hall is making his move on uh, Meg. He kind of, like... Big time. You know, if you ever sometime? need someone to talk to, or... <laughs> he, like, grabs her shoulder, and I was like, Oh, Ron, get out! Uh, so, I guess, I guess Meg goes back to the house, and she slaps him, and... Well, yeah. First of all, I'd slap him too. He was just waiting for her in her apartment. Like I don't know. I maybe they've swapped keys. I don't know. But Dan was just inside her apartment. Oh, so he was in her apartment. Okay, yeah. I don't remember that. So Hill has now tracked down West. Yeah. And West is kind of like bowing down to Hill. He's like sort of you know they he's not being his as in the face. As much. Because, well, because Hill goes, uh, I, I wonder why his heart is beating like it is, blah, blah, blah. When we both know he's quite dead. And I feel like oh. that was the turn where Wes is like, oh, this guy kind of gets it. Maybe we can work on shit. So then we then we go back and Dan and Meg have gone to Hill's office and they start digging through the files and she goes in to see her dad. And, you know, we know that, but in the files, he, fi Dan finds the Meg file, which has yeah. a lock of her hair and other, and uh, uh, like clippings. And it's like super creepy. So creepy. This guy needs to be arrested immediately. <laughs> so then we cut back to Hill and West and West has kind of told Hill what's going on, shown him the serum, yep. and then he, like, you know, does the slow back away while he's wait, at the mic but wait. microscope. Well, that, this is my favorite part, is <laughs> Hill goes, Duh, ah, Mr. West, I recognize this. And he's talking about the microscope, as far as I can tell, because he goes, I recognize what? this. And then he goes to the microscope and looks into it. <laughs> I don't understand this scene at all. Because to me, the way it comes off is he's saying, ah, yes, a microscope. I've seen one of those before. And then he just like goes to it. <laughs> I didn't understand it. It was, it was one of the only one liners that I didn't I didn't buy. I didn't quite understand. It just, I don't know, made me giggle. So Wes backs up. <laughs> da, da, da. Picks up the shovel and like really adjusts it. You know, he well, doesn't you, you just pick up a, a shovel. Grip. You know, he gets it because, you know, it's like it's it, it's like what's the Mel Gibson one where, you know, he has to swing away at the aliens uh, signs, signs, terrible movie. But that part <laughs> of it. Great. There's like a little five minute section yeah. in that movie where you're like, I'm loving this. They did. They set up for that whole five minutes and that whole five minutes were good. The rest of the movie. whatever. Well, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you only get one shot really to hit someone with a shovel from behind, Dan. Because, you know, if you screw it up, they're going to turn around and charge you. So you really want to make sure that you got a good grip. Any, You don't want any slack in your wrists, all right? You got to really make an impact. If someone hits me with a shovel, I'm not charging them. I'm running away. Thank you. Um, so No, nah, that's the wrong move because then they're going to chase you with... Dan, they're going to chase you with the shovel from behind and hit you again. You have to, you have to decrease the distance because the reach of the shovel is their only... The only thing they have over you at that point. So if you're in close, they can't hit you with the shovel. Come on, Dan. This is just self-defense 101. Close combat training from Tony. <laughs> <sighs> so he decapitates Hill. And then he, yeah. then he picks up Hill's head and puts it in the tray. 
falls over. <laughs> Stands it up, falls over. Takes one of those letter spindles, puts that uh, in the tray, just head on the shoves it spindle. right on that needle. I mean, come on. You can't get much better than that. That's such a good moment. And so then he uh, he injects the head. The head comes back to life. Does he also inject the body? He also injects yeah. the body. It, well, this, <laughs> is this the part where we get the line parts? Where he's like, parts. I've never done whole parts. <laughs> Which is this probably great, is. It's such a so, great line. <laughs> so he's injected the head, injected the body. And so somehow the head is still in control of the body. The, the it head doesn't is still... make any sense at all. This The head is able to talk to the body somehow, even though it can't see. And it's like it stumbles around, but does his bidding like that doesn't make sense, guys. I'm sorry. This is the point at which the movie has sort of stretched <laughs> the limit of its imagination. You're kind of like, uh, I, I'm going to. Everything else has been so plausible. I'm going to cut you some slack on this right, one. Yeah, I'll, I'll go with it only because I'm having so much fun. And that that's honestly the only reason. If this movie sucked up until then, I'd be, I would be so mad that they're doing this. But I'm, I'll, I'll give them a break. Oh, I'm wrong. Okay, so the head is awake. It knocks out West and takes off. Yes, with the body. With the body. The body takes yeah, off. With the, the body head. sneaks takes up. Takes the head. With the body head. gets up and sneaks up and knocks him out and then takes his own tray with his head and leaves and somehow gets all the way to his office. I don't know the distance difference between these two places, but I'm <laughs> I'm to believe Cross the street. Cross right, the street. He at least goes outside while holding his head <laughs> in front of him. <sighs> it's it's amazing. So let's see, how does all this work? Um. Oh, so that so actually, this was when they went through the files, found Meg's hair and clipping, and we we see that Dad has had the laser lobotomy. Yes. Yeah. So now the head with the tray has gotten back to Hill's office. Yep. And he shuts the door and turns on the light. <laughs> yep. <laughs> and then goes to the mini fridge, gets blood, puts blood in the pan so that Hill's head so, has something to drink. I have some questions on this, Dan, because one, why does he have blood in his refrigerator? Because what is it? And then my second question, is it his blood or is he now mixing blood types? Because from my understanding, that wouldn't really work. Uh, it could just be plasma. It probably is okay. just plasma. Chances okay. are it would be just plasma. Why would he have plasma in there? Right. He same he, same he, question. He wouldn't have plasma. <laughs> but, you know, like we said, we're just giving a little suspension of disbelief because yeah. yeah. we've come so far. We're yeah, not going to we're not going to expect too much. You know, they've had a lot of real science in here. Well, none of the science what? works. But... Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> real science. So now he has he's. Now Hill is going back down to the morgue and he's yeah. put like the fake, you know, fake model of a head on oh, his body my God. and his head is in the knapsack and somehow the body is navigating with the fake head and the head of the knapsack. <laughs> we could have just used a couple little holes cut in the knapsack. Right. That's all so I need. A couple holes so you could see. That's out. why it's so confusing. This body is is navigating a world without its eyes, ostensibly now, which is incredible. And of course, everybody in the notes on things are like, why didn't he just put his own head on top of his own body? Because what if it falls off? How are you going to how are you going to attach that guy tape, safely? Hot glue. Hot glue. Hot glue. A lot of hot glue. <laughs> a lot of hot glue. Some gorilla glue. Get it in there real good. And we have like a nice bit where like the the the, the ear falls off of the head at one point. Because the head is like a model head where you can take off parts of the brain and the ear. And of everything. course. So they and then fall. That, the our great security guard, one of the best parts of the movie, is like, is that you, Dr. Hill? And the voice from In the Duffel is like, of course it's me. <laughs> it's so, it's oh, so good. It's so Why good. would his voice be that muffled? It doesn't make any sense. This security guard is not good at his job. Or he's great and just doesn't care about anything. So... Did I write? I write. Okay, so he's he's in the morgue. 
And of course, we have selective use of lights where he doesn't just turn on the lights. He leaves most of the lights off for some reason. Of course. Well, for yeah. dramatic effect. Now, I wrote love scene. What's love scene? Yeah, no, this is this is the love scene. This is when the dad brings the daughter in. Oh, OK. But first, I just want to talk again about the weird choices of the science, because when he un when he undoes the duffel bag that controls his head, the head is gasping for air. But this guy doesn't have any lungs anymore, right? Like, what? He doesn't need to breathe. <laughs> Such a weird choice. <laughs> so, so the de so de the dean has carried Meg to the morgue, yeah, and then throws her on the table, and then brooms all clothes stripped off. Yeah, by the and dad, they... which is weird. I understand that he's no, under no, no. the spell, but like. And then the dad stands in the corner and watches yeah, everything it, that goes down. Yeah, it's uh, oh, that's what that's what it was. When I wrote love scene, I think maybe they were making out again or something. Yeah, they were they were like making oh, out or something. And then okay. the dad busts in, daddy's home, and he knocks out Dan and steals. Oh yeah, her. you're right. You're right. Yep. So then. Herbert West gets to the house. Wake up, Dan. What are you doing? You dumb idiot. Yep. He's got it. Now we, now we get to the scene that... that. <sighs> yeah, it's tough to watch. <laughs> like, it, I mean, I'm sure that this, this scene has launched a, a, a million perversions. You know? Oh, I mean, yeah, it's... 100%. <laughs> and the, I, I don't want... I'm like, I'm not going to talk about it too much because... In the in the context, it, it like it works, and I get it. But like watching it, I was just, I was, ah, ah please don't do any of this. When, Were you watching it with your wife? Oh yeah, no, she did not enjoy the end of this movie. Dan, <laughs> she she was not a fan of this scene. Uh, I mean, it's just so, it's fucked up. It's just like really so, messed up. Doctor Hill picks up his own head. Does a little make-out session, does a little stimulation, On and the does boobies. a little more stimulation. And then, yeah, and then moves his head and is ostensibly going in south of the border. And it was just, it's too much, man. It's too much. I can't handle it. <laughs> oh, wait. So so he he does say a great a few great things. I've always admired your beauty. You will love me. And I guess one line, more passion. <laughs> don't remember <laughs> because she's she's like hitting him and screaming and he's like ah yes more passion more. like he likes it which is even more twisted and i just i mean the fact that he says you will love me is wild because like you are deranged at that point there's no way there's no way this is gonna win her over you're headless so meg you're seeing someone now yeah it's um dr hill's head <laughs> <laughs> just the just the head portion. That's uh, really all he, I need. He's uh you know, he's very romantic. <laughs> <laughs> so of course now Herbert West and Dan break in and they're like, uh, you're in trouble. We're gonna we're gonna get you. And he's like, No, Go you're you. in trouble. I have you know, I've I've it's I'm ready plan. for you guys. Yeah, like because West comes in, he's like, I have a plan. <laughs> and, then, and then Hill's like, Well, I have a plan. And his plan was better. His plan was definitely better. All the zombies, all the dead bodies in so the room. So many bodies. Jump so many. Up, like literally jump up at the same time, and it is pandemonium melee. It's awesome. It's awesome. It's and such a it's such a great climax scene. There's probably like seven zombies, and Herbert. Herbert overdoses the Hill's body, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah that body. was his his finishing move to Hill. And uh, yeah, so it's just basically this giant battle. Um, yep. The dad comes out of it to some extent to to rescue Meg. Um, like gas gets broken, and then the the overdose body, its intestines attack Herbert West. Which is, I, I don't even understand that it comes out of nowhere. Like, we haven't set that up in any shape or, or form throughout the movie that 
that body parts can also come, uh, you know, alive on their own. So that was a little weird, but you know, he was super drugged, you know, he got hyper juiced. So I guess that's what happens. Now we know maybe that's what happens in the sequel, uh, beyond reanimator. I, I, I don't remember. Bri- oh, bride, bride comes next. Of the re- is bride next. Yeah. And then bride beyond. is next. And then beyond comes in like the two thousands. And I think that movie was, was pretty bad. So there's gas. So Meg and Dan have gotten out. They're good, trying to get to the elevator, but there's zombies still coming at them, and I Meg w- gets killed. Hold on, hold on though. Sure. Before before this happens, at one point the headless body falls out the door, and the security guard is there finally, yeah. <laughs> and he just goes, "What the?" F-? And then they cut away, and we never. <laughs> I don't think we ever see him again. Do we see him again? I don't remember. Who the security guard? Yeah, the security guard. Does he come back? No, not really. We, I mean, we don't even he... know that West. We don't even West doesn't even die. No, correct. But West the security didn't... guard doesn't do. I think he runs away. Now that I'm thinking about, it. I think he, oh, ru- he takes away? off and runs away. Yeah, I think that's what he does. It just, I don't know. It just felt weird. So one of the zombies is choking Meg, and he can't get him off. So he runs and gets the axe, and finally he runs axes... all the way down the hallway. His move is to take off and leave his girlfriend who is dying and spend like a couple of minutes getting a weapon. No, dude, do get in there with your body. Do something. So he gets the zombie off, but she's dead. They drag her dead body down to the ER, m- mirroring the initial scene where we met Dan trying mm-hmm. to save a life. He fails again, i.e. you're not going to be a good doctor, Dan. Not and what does Dan, <laughs> what does Dan two, do? Brother. He goes, pulls out the reagent, we cut, and then in the in a little animation, we see the reagent go in, in the, out of the syringe. Which was a cool effect. It was like, it was like oh, it was that's beautiful. all you see. That's all you see on the screen is just the, the green liquid slowly going out. And I was like, cool. Good for you guys. And then, then we, we get cut a to the great music. What? Oh, when a you scream. Get, yeah. You get like a guttural, like, oh, yep, it worked. And we it's cut great. to the great music again, and that's the end of the movie. Yeah, and I, 10 out of 10. Honestly, this is yeah. great. I give it 9 out of 10. Um, Just, you know, like... 9 out of 10. All right, I'll buy that. 10 out, yeah, 9 out of 10. I mean, you know, it's not like... I mean, will I rewatch this movie? No, I'll never rewatch yes. this movie. Yes, I will rewatch this movie yes, for sure. Tony will. <laughs> 100%. Not only that, but I'm going to watch the sequels uh, in October. <laughs> for sure. Because I do, we, I don't know if we've talked about this, but I do uh, 31 Days of Halloween. So you watch a horror movie every day of October. Oh, okay. That's, that's a thing you can do. I do. Um, do. <laughs> uh, and it's a thing you can do. Um, yeah. I mean, just the plot was pretty well driven. I mean, are there absolutely yeah. crazy things that make no sense? Yes. Uh, the, how does course. the, how does the head talk? How does the head navigate? How to, how do you get across town when you're just a head with <laughs> carrying around your own? Being carried I by wish, your own body. The fact that we got a scene where a guy was literally putting on his shoes and we didn't get a scene of a headless body wandering down the street, I'm a little disappointed. <laughs> I would have loved to get a, you know, a nice two minute clip of that. Did they shoot anything out of doors? I don't I don't think they did. Yeah. That's and a good point. You, good for really them. interesting thing is they did some really interesting lighting they just like the hallway just had exposed bulb Mm -hmm. which looked good and they did a scene where they had candles on the table and it looked really good so whoever was lighting this did a really good job yeah it's 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 solid man this is this is a good a fun campy horror movie except for the one scene which is too much for me to handle Oh, it was, it was incredible. You're just like, <laughs> I, you're like, oh my God, what is this? They're going, you know. And, oh my God. And I remember, I think I read about the scene beforehand. I'm like, how is that going to work? And then you see it and you're like, okay, that's that's really creepy and weird. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, how that it, works. It's one of the more messed up scenes you'll see. Woof. And so, they went there, you know, kudos to them for just going for it. Kind of like in Troll Two, they you know right when he right when he's about to pee on the food, <laughs> perfect cut. Like cut this away. one, it was creepy, and then like oh, we're out, stop. we're out, we're done. That was that was enough. <sighs> Take us right to the edge. Oh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. know what's gonna happen, but I guess this movie when it came out was rated X. Really? Yeah. Interesting. I and, mm. 
And I think this was the X version that we saw, the original okay. X version. So, I mean, really, it's just that last scene that probably gives oh, yeah. it the X, right? Because a lot of yeah. 80s movies have boobies. Mm -hmm. So, like, I don't feel like this is, other than that one scene, it's not more offensive than, you know, most 80s films, I feel like. Yeah, because when he goes in there, like, on the breast, he's yeah. on the breast. Yeah, he's, he's, not, he's like, in it. He's not in He's not a, you know, the, there's a trail of blood left all over, yeah, all over is, her naked ugh. body. <laughs> that is, I don't not, like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. Tony's <laughs> like, no, no. I just, I was, I watched, I watched it like this. Yeah, <sighs> it's very, it's very messed up. Anywho, so yeah, no fun one, fun one. I mean, one of the more enjoyable movies that we've done. One of the few enjoyable movies that we've done for sure. Where you didn't for feel sure. like. You know, it was a chore to go back and turn the screen on and like. Uh. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was it was good. It's a good pick, Dan. Uh, so now is the time where you tell us a little something that you might have seen during the week that you did enjoy, my friend Tony. I watched the new Netflix cartoon based off the Lost World franchise called uh, I think it's called Camp Cretaceous. And it was surprisingly fun. What it's, what is what is Lost so, World? I don't know what that is. Jurassic Park. Sorry, oh, Jurassic I, Park. Okay, sure. I saw that. I mean, I saw uh, the clip for it. Yeah. So it's a it's a it's they're opening a summer camp on Isla Nubar. Terrible idea, guys. Just Terrible the idea. dumbest thing you could ever do. Uh, but the the kids in it are are pretty fun. Like I like all the characters. They do a good job of mixing up like the the types. The archetypes are in there, and there's. You know, there's a couple of parts that I was like, oh, that's probably too scary for a kid, but maybe not. I don't know. A series or movie? It is a series. There, It's eight, uh, like 20 to 30 minute episodes. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's definitely it's if you if you're into the JP world, it's it's probably worth just a gander. Just check the, it out. The JP world. And now are you a Jurassic fan Park. of the whole JP world? I I am. I am a big fan. I like I'm I'm the guy that loves Jurassic Park three. You know what I mean? Like I I'm still in Jurassic World. I thought was great. I loved the the rebirth. And then I can't remember what the second one's called in the new trilogy. That's the only one I I didn't love. But I'll go back for the third for sure. I had a Mr. Toast fan who is also a giant Bryce Dallas Howard fan. And sure. so we were we were making fun of Jurassic World and she she was not happy. <laughs> you so you didn't you didn't enjoy Jurassic World? I, I don't think I've seen it. I think I saw what? part of it. <laughs> okay. I mean I if if you're expecting it to be Jurassic Park, you're 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 wrong. Like it's just not gonna happen. Jurassic Park, the way I look at it is like the original Jurassic Park is its own thing. It's oh it's a near perfect movie. It's it's amazing. And then the sequels are just like fun dinosaur <laughs> bloodbaths. I I mean, I, I have a great time. I have a great just sort time. Of, sort of Land Before Time for Tony. Sure. Yeah. Also great. I love Land Before Time. Adorable. So my pick is a TV show called Dispatches from Elsewhere. What? Never heard of it. AMC. Okay. Uh, Jason Siegel wrote it. Stars in it, directs at least what? the first episode. Yeah. Uh, 10 episode, one hour. It's this really strange. He's like this super boring guy, and he kind of gets invited into this sort of secret world where they keep telling him what to do. And then he meets all these other people, and they sort of form like this team, which is kind of weird because it's very similar huh. to what, something I've been writing, but completely different. But it's. <laughs> It's just similar elements, you know, sure, like a, sure. a group of disparate characters are sort of drawn into a thing. And but there's also like, you know, straight. Yeah. Um, but pretty interesting. Uh, OK. Uh, just very different. There's some so lots of really interesting visuals. Um, eh, I, I'm intrigued to see where it goes. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll finish the whole path. And uh, one of the one of the guys is a. Uh, uh, Andre 3000 and what? from whatchamacallit and then uh, Sally Sally Field is uh, one of the other what? like four people on her team yeah how have I never heard of this 
uh, came out in March. Uh, the okay. critics, the critics are most, you know, most people are kind of positive ish. Richard E. Grant kind of plays the guy that might be the bad guy or also might be the good guy, you know, the okay. sort of leader of the whole sort of thing. Uh, just in, really interestingly designed and just, you know, Jason Siegel, he's a really smart guy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Yeah. And I mean, he, I'm sure he did that one terrible show or what, well, I don't know if it's a terrible show, but the How I Met Your Mother, I never really watched I mean, that show. It certainly wasn't, it didn't start a terrible show. I never finished it. If I mean, I kind of, I kind of fell off uh, halfway through, but you know, I mean, it was, it's a, it's a serviceable sitcom for service, sure. Service. Yes. It's not a terrible show. It's a serviceable sitcom, but you do that for however many years he did it and you're 50. set for life and you yeah. can now do really interesting pro i mean he did the he wrote the muppets movie too right yeah yeah which was great which was one of the best sort of dealings with with uh oh for sure that, that material you know I, I i i you know most of those muppets movies are pretty rough yeah eh, yeah it's i mean the fun the characters are interesting but it's yeah you know yes. muppet yeah, yeah, treasure yeah. island you're like well okay that's fine but i don't care Except for uh, Muppet Christmas Carol, which is a staple of December for me. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, Nine-year-old Tony. That's, uh, that's who he is. It's good, man. Gonzo. So good. So how are we going to finish up October, the month of Halloween? What is our final October movie going to be? Tony! It is going to be... Uh, what I imagine will be the next great Halloween classic. Now, we we shoot these a little bit early, so this movie hasn't come out yet. So I don't know. There's no, like, reviews yet. So no no one has told me whether this movie is good or bad. It, we're going to go into it almost blind, and that excites me a great deal. It's coming to Netflix, and it stars the great Adam Sandler and, you know, the, the usuals that come with Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go, a throwback to his his water boy character a little bit. It's uh, Hubie Halloween, which uh, I I couldn't think of a more perfect way to celebrate Halloween than a movie not that is just so about Halloween itself. Halloween's biggest fan. That's what the preview says. Oh, is that what it says? Yeah, Halloween's yeah. biggest he's, he fan. is Halloween's biggest fan, and then I guess he has to save Halloween or something. I don't know, but I'm very <sighs> excited about it. Kind of like a Muppet Christmas Carol, except for a Muppet Christmas Carol is uh, a ninety nine percent in my book. It's so good, Michael Caine, uh, Ebenezer Scrooge. I can't do a Michael Caine. I don't know why I tried, but he's uh, he makes Tony, me cry every time. Tony, don't do it like that. Oh, I mean, that was pretty good. That was a, that that was a little good. bit of it, made now. <laughs> we we have a few friends that are impressionists, and so and we are careful. not. We, yeah. Don't Tony, <laughs> Tony, do do a British. Tony's like Tony. Tony, Tony do does the worst accents ever. What was that accent you did in your your big show that the teacher made you do? That was so. Uh oh, just the Midwest. That one? No, no, no. You 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 do a great Midwest accent. Oh, your wow, Midwest is you. great. That's no, you had movie. whenever you do like you had to do like a European oh, guy. My European guy. Yeah, yeah. Yes, okay. We could do that. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that, it did not go over well. It It's so bulky at this. You know, it's like you could do that in the 90s. You know, I'm a goat herder and I like to herd right. the goats, you know. But now we're just like, come on, please, please don't do that. No, We've seen no. it. Either do it right or don't do it at all. Well, I'm Dan and that's Tony. This has been hate watching. That was Tony. the most that was the most down outro you've ever done. Well, that was the show. <laughs> <laughs> we enjoyed the movie and now we're depressed because this is over. <laughs> this it's the last time we're gonna like the movie. So yes, uh, I, I'm Dan. This is Tony. So I'm and, trying to go up with it. Oh, this is Tony. This is <laughs> this is Dan. And I'm Tony. And we're oh, just boy. been hate watching. We watch my do bobcat how does he do bobcat <laughs> join us <laughs> next week for hubie halloween everybody happy halloween everybody hey, watch it. We're dead and